Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at one of the best power banks on the market right now. Why is it the best? Well, aside from regular USB ports and a Type-C USB port, there's also an AC socket. That's right, a 220 volt socket, or you can buy the 110 volt variant for those in America. Although most laptop chargers, cell phone chargers, etc. that you'd plug into here can actually run on either 110 volts or 220 volts. So it's actually pretty impressive. And this was sent to me by Rav Power for review. So what can you actually do? Well, it comes with this little adapter here for the inverter. This is a modified sine wave inverter and this adapter just lets us plug any country socket in. So let's start with a CFL light bulb and the light bulb comes on no problem at all. Now let's swap this out for an LED light bulb. Again, no problem at all. What else can you do with this? Well, let's say you have a fan. For example, I've got this huge industrial type fan here. Let's plug it in. Now, just a warning, um, if you run a AC fan on a modified sine wave inverter, it will run slower, it will run hotter, it will make a little bit of noise, and in the long run, it could actually damage the fan or anything with a motor, basically. Now, I run these kind of fans on modified sine wave inverters all the time, but it's not recommended, so I want to mention that. The other thing that's not recommended is using sensitive medical equipment, because again, this is a modified sine wave inverter instead of a pure sine wave inverter. And of course, you can also plug in your laptop. Now, this laptop's fully charged, so this isn't the best demonstration, but just like anything else, plug it into the little adapter that they give you, then plug it into the inverter here, and it will start charging. Simple. Another thing you might use it for is your DSL modem. So let's plug this in and you can see it's booting up no problem. So, so basically anything that you normally plug into the wall, you can plug into this power bank, although it does have a limit. The maximum continuous load is 85 watts. Now this is a 99.9 .9 watt hour or 27,000 milliamp hour power bank, and we can check that later. For anyone who's curious, it comes with this charger here that plugs into the wall. It's got a little DC barrel jack there, and it consumes up to 30 watts. Although in my testing, it's closer to around 25 watts when you're charging this. If you're interested in how long it takes to charge this, check the video description down below. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, it has a C-type USB port, so we can plug in this cable here, and you'll see my phone comes on because it's charging. It also has standard USB ports, so we can plug my phone in again, and of course, it will start charging. So just like a regular power bank, it has normal USB ports, but the big selling point of this is that AC socket. And now we're going to use my AC watt meter and a 120 watt light bulb going through a dimmer switch to measure the maximum output of this. So let me turn on my dimmer. Uh, let's just turn this. So you can see the bulb over there is coming on. It's currently consuming around 36 watts or 38. Let's go higher. So we're up to around 60 watts. Let's go higher. I'm just adjusting my dimmer here. So we're up to 88 watts right now. Let's put it all the way and see what happens. This is a 120 watt light bulb, although it might not actually consume that much. Okay, so we're drawing out 103 watts at the moment. Let's see if it can handle that load. This is an old style element bulb, so it gets extremely hot and it really consumes a lot of power, but it's great for testing things like this. So it actually seems to be managing it okay. Now, I don't know how long it could manage that for, but it seems to be managing it okay for now. One thing I can tell you is I ran a 60 watt load on this and it ran all the way basically until the battery was empty. So it had no problem with a 60 watt continuous load. If you look at the back, it says AC output 100 watts max or 85 rated. Now, honestly, I'm not 100% clear what that means. If you know, put a comment in the video description down below. But the way I understood it is that it can run 100 watts for a certain amount of time, but if it's a continuous load, it could only run 85 watts. If you think I'm wrong, please do correct me, but that's my understanding of that. Now, what happens if you plug in something that uses a huge amount of power that's way over the limit? Well, let's try it out. I have a hairdryer here. Put it on the first setting. So you see it came on for a couple of seconds and now the status lights are flashing to indicate there's a problem because of course it's overloaded. What we'll do is we'll just leave it a minute and see if it manages to reset itself. So it's been about a minute, the inverter light has come back on, let's see if we can run the fan. There you go. So it does have protection against overcurrent draw through the AC socket. 
Now, of course, you're not limited to plugging in one thing. You could use a splitter or an extension cable to break it out into multiple connections. So I have this little, this is actually a power meter, but for this example, we're just using it as an extension socket. So you see, we're running the light bulb from the inverter here, the little power bank, and we can also plug in the fan. So you can run multiple things at once, but of course, the higher the load, like the more power you're actually drawing out, the quicker you're gonna discharge this battery. There is a limit to how much power this thing can actually hold. So it is really fantastic and how convenient this AC socket is, but of course there's a limit to how much power is stored in here. So you do have to be aware of that. Um, you can basically calculate it from the watt hours and how heavy your load is. For example, let's say this fan is 40 watts. You could calculate it through the watt hours there. And one thing you will notice is that there's a fan inside here and there's also a vent here. So it is, I believe it's pulling in air here and then exhausting it there. So it needs that to keep the batteries, but primarily to keep the inverter cool. So I'm glad that they actually went with a fan, especially somewhere like here in the Philippines where it's super hot. Although you can get these in the UK and America through Amazon, but here in the Philippines, it's sold through Lazada. And I'm sorry if this thing is starting to look a little bit dirty. It's around 30, 35 degrees Celsius in my room. And this is like a kind of rubberized coating and it just picks up marks. So sorry about that. Um, what we're gonna do now is test it. We can really pull out 2.4 amp on the USB port. So let's plug in my tester. What I have here is a USB wattmeter and a USB dummy load. So it's currently at one amp. In fact, let me zoom in so you can see this on the screen. So we're currently at 1.4 amp, let's go higher, 1.9, 2.3, 2.4, and I'll just hold it here for a minute to make sure it's stable, and I will slowly go over the limit and see what happens. 2.5, 2.6, let's keep going. Okay, so somewhere beyond 2.6 is where it turned off to protect itself. So it does indeed offer the 2.4 amp output that's expected on this USB port. And what I'll do now is fully charge this and then we'll discharge it with a constant one amp load and we'll see if the capacity of this is actually genuine, if it's really a 27,000 milliamp hour power bank or 99.9 .9 watt hours. So the discharge test has finished and the results are very impressive. Let me zoom in. You can see we actually managed to draw out 96 watt hours. Now that is very impressive because the rating of this is only 99.9 .9 watt hours. And usually there's around 10% loss going from the internal voltage of 3.7 volts to the output of 5 volts. So the fact that we got 96 watt hours is incredible. Um, that suggests that they're probably packing a little bit extra into this because you've still got those losses and we're only like a couple percent of the stated capacity. So I'm very happy with that result. That means it's a genuine 99.9 .9 watt hour power bank or 27,000 milliamp hour power bank. So there you go, that is one of the best power banks you can buy right now. You've got standard USB ports, type C output, and you've got an AC inverter. This one's 220 volts, but you can also buy a 110 volt version. Um, it's really quite impressive. The convenience is just incredible. Like I said, you have to set your expectations for how long it can actually run something for. Something like a DSL modem, it could run for so, so long because these barely consume any power at all. But something like this big industrial fan, it's gonna consume the battery much faster. Or if you have a laptop, it's gonna consume it much faster. Um, so if you do have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Like I mentioned, there are links to buy this inside the Philippines, the UK and the US. Um, they do have a local warranty here in the Philippines, same with the United Kingdom and the United States. And yeah, it's very impressive. I like it. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.